that patient had um, congestion within the cavernous sinus, and as a consequence, had, um, I suppose, venous congestion all the way back, and it was enough to paralyze the ex extraocular muscles, and she, restored, she didn't lose her sight, but uh, the interesting thing is that you were on that group and we were having an argument whether it's sort of some of the extraciliary vessels could have been involved down the line, but it was probably taken as venous. Now, um, that case that I had, now it was a slightly different lecture, I don't know how we showed that one, um, actually at the time with the patient that we had, that became legal. And when I looked at it in more detail, I'm totally convinced it was an arterial one because what had happened was it presented two days later, but it presented to a nurse who thought it was bruising, so she let it sit. And then she went to the GP who mistook exactly, as you said, the sloughing as an effective process and put her on antibiotics. So she went to the hospital herself on day five, who didn't use hyaluronic days, like a lot of British or Irish hospitals, and particularly German hospitals don't seem to, uh, in the ER. We had a case recently that was a month Two weeks in an army hospital, two weeks, uh, our colleague Wolfgang handed it to me and found it. And I said, why didn't you use Hyorondas? And they said, Patrick, I know that it's out there to use, but I didn't know the doses. Anyway, it's on camera, so we'll not go into that. But I mean, I'm totally convinced that that Venus one that I thought all the way back then so, was actually so arterial. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. Let, let, let's us ask you, and... Well, the first one, I'd like to make one point, and that is that, but first a question. Who uses lignocaine routinely in their filler? And who routinely chooses not to use lignocaine in their filler? So we're in a great minority. Uh, but you should, in my opinion, not be using lignocaine in your filler because lignocaine, it's illogical and unhelpful. First of all, if you are injecting, by the time it's working, you're in another zone, so it's useless. And you lose the only symptom that you will learn of vascular occlusion. So that's the first thing. That's the, my point. Plus the fact is a vasodilator, so it increases your risk quite possibly. Of sending it further down the line sure. where you might not want it to go, like the eye. So that they're bad. It's bad. They're good reasons that it's bad. And the... the and and it's why do you think it's used? It's probably because because uh, people who don't who don't have the level of knowledge and understanding that you have believe that it's going to be nicer for the patient. So it's to do with sales, not cells. If I can or <laughs> use that analogy again, mm. can I ask you, Patrick, if you had to say what is the, the most important distinguishing fe feature in the diagnosis between venous? and arterial, and then if anybody in the room, just say one word, please. Duration. Right, and anybody else got any one word answer? I, I, you need the microphone to, to make your comment. So sorry. It's the blood pressure. Blood pressure. Within the, uh, the vessel itself. Right. Arterial pressure is much higher. Yeah, so th in order to make the diagnosis, I think it's the time delay that's the most important thing, isn't sure. it? That's true. And the words. absence of pain, is that right? That's fair to say, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right, more than one word, yeah. It's the absence of pain would also indicate venous, and the time delay to getting symptoms of apparent ischemia. And and then for that, that those, that's the diagnosis. And what about the uh, treatment how does the treatment differ patrick okay so at Briefly. the time i advocated the use of um steroids you're better using intravenous uh, um hydrocortisone because sorry, sorry, I, I, let me stop you for a second yes it, there are some things we would do in both cases hyaluronidase oh absolutely yeah. but there there's something you'd reach for in venous mm -hmm. more than in the other and you'd say it's steroids would you yes the, the even in the Onset of necrosis, steroids actually work in your favor anyway. And, and could you use them in arterial as well? I, I, I think we... So what's the logic? Keep, okay, so the first thing is everybody is in as advanced as we are. You're going to have doctors in Pakistan, India, Africa, so you need a simple protocol. And if you're maintaining a simple protocol, I'm slightly against adding in aspirin, steroids, all the things that may work or may not. 
So, I mean, certainly highly wronged is um, top of the list for sure. We were in a situation, I suppose, where particularly with the onset of uh, dermophilar blindness, we're a bit like GPs and heart attacks. Same analogy. Do we send them to cardiologists? No, we don't. We treat them ourselves as CPR. So as a consequence, we're not saying you shouldn't send them to hospital specialists. Of course you should. But if you've got a window of maybe 30 minutes, you should try and treat it yourself. So as a consequence, superorbital, peribulbular, hyaluronides. But what you. about the, the steroid? What's the argument? Why would you use steroid in venous and not in arterial? Tissue congestion, backup flow. So, I mean, that's what causes yes. the run. Yeah. Anyone disagree with that? I can't see the logic of that, actually, but I, I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying I can't understand the logic. Why can you understand the logic? And maybe I'll have to have that off uh, during... Well, what do you use for swelling of tissue normally? Steroids. Yeah, but it, this is due to, if your roundabout theory is correct, yes. it's due to your, bla your backing up and it's just... With congestion, yeah. But it's... But it, the whole thing's fine. Isn't it, isn't it a, a new... Ma isn't it a... Um, water pressure thing rather than something Both. rather than inflammation. It, because Both, steroids should be anti-inflammatory. Sure, but you got to think of backflow. And, right? and don't you get inflammation as part of the process? No, but the, the backflow causes the river to flow over its banks into the thing. So I'm that's not, why you I, I, I agree with you. Less congestion. But why would I not use steroids in one and in, use it in the other? I'd, I'd probably be inclined to use it in either uh, both or neither. But what sure. do you think? Okay. Okay. There's well, a logic. To that. Come on. No, no, you're right. <laughs> we're, we're very old friends. Yeah. And, and, and this is the great thing. You need an atmosphere where you can disagree agreeably. So but now, so let, if you've got arterial, it blocks, and that's it, but it doesn't congest, but it does in backflow because there's a pressure. Yes, in okay. One, all right. Okay. It's coming okay. back. In two directions, so it must fill out. Yeah, I love the idea of the roundabout versus the hose pipe, don't you think? Good idea. Any comments, please, on Patrick? Not Patrick, no, on Patrick's talk. <laughs> Save those till later, please. Letters on a postcard.